2019 was supposed to be the season where Renault finally started to close the gap to the top teams and get closer to their end goal of becoming a race winning and possibly championship winning team. Instead in 2019, they became further away from that in a season that was incredibly disappointing and underwhelming. Which was quite a surprise considering that after Renault signed Daniel Ricciardo it seemed as though this team was really now going for it post 2019. But things in 2019 just didn't come off for this team and led to the near disaster of Renault losing a top 5 finishing position in the Constructors. But what exactly happened to cause this and what led to the very disappointing season? Well in this video in a detailed way I'm going to analyse Renault's 2019 and exactly race by race step by step what went wrong. And look at how Renault ruined such a promising position for the 2019 Formula 1 season. So of course to start off in 2019 we will start off with pre-season testing. Now pre-season testing according to the media for Renault was quite good. According to the media again, Renault had the 4th best car. Now even though I disagree with this because of course I went to testing and the Renault car did not look that impressive compared to what the media was saying, their pace was still decent. It wasn't horrible but they weren't exactly lighting up the timesheets. And neither was the car looking amazing to the eye. But testing went mostly good for the Renault team. Again their pace was decent, the reliability was decent and mostly... Renault had a solid pre-season testing program, except for the time their rear wing fell off down the pit straight. Which of course is not a big thing, is it? But going into the season with the drivers Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hülkenberg, Renault thought they had a pretty good car and a pretty good chance of pulling away from the midfield. And really thought they could start to bridge that gap between the midfield and the top teams. But they were in for one hell of a reality check at the first race in Melbourne. As in qualifying where much was expected of the Renault Works team, they only qualified in P11 and P12. This wasn't down to reliability issues or mistakes, it was simply Renault lacking a fundamental pace in qualifying. But it was a pace that Renault thought they could improve upon for the Grand Prix and they certainly did so with Nico Hülkenberg. Who had a great start to the Grand Prix and got up solidly into the top 10 and then once Romain Grosjean later on retired from the Grand Prix, Nico was able to finish in P7. And was not too far away from finishing at the front of the midfield ahead of Kevin Magnussen. But for home favourite in Australia, Daniel Ricciardo, it was a very disappointing weekend. Firstly being out qualified by teammate Nico Hülkenberg and then destroyed his own race in a matter of metres by getting onto the grass unnecessarily and going through a gutter that completely destroyed his front wing. And soon after that Daniel Ricciardo retired after what was a miserable weekend. But at least for Renault they came away with solid points, 6 points that would maybe later on in 2019 go on to be quite important. But they were hoping to improve upon certain parts of the Australian Grand Prix weekend where they were weak, such as qualifying. But in Bahrain, they didn't improve, they got worse. As the best Daniel Ricciardo could do in Bahrain qualifying was P11 and Nico Hülkenberg was down in P17. As Hülkenberg suffered reliability issues that meant he couldn't get the best out of his car pace-wise. And those reliability issues were only the start of trouble at Renault during the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Into the race we got and the Renault race pace was very strong if not the strongest in the midfield. As Daniel Ricciardo soon enough got his way to the front of the midfield as Renault put him on a one stop race. Which later on turned out to be the wrong decision. Meanwhile Nico Hülkenberg had a great start from P17 and was immediately in the fight in the top 10. And was certainly in a better position in the race on his two stop compared to teammate Daniel Ricciardo. The teammate he actually made contact with in the race. As Hülkenberg was going past Daniel down at turn 1. But right at the end of the Grand Prix it was P6 for Nico Hülkenberg. And Daniel Ricciardo was in P10 so they had 9 points coming to Renault at this point. And then all of a sudden the reliability issues that had plagued Nico Hülkenberg in qualifying came back in a massive way. 
as Hulkenberg's car completely shut down on the exit of Turn 1 and so did Daniel Ricciardo's at Turn 2, meaning that Renault lost 9 points instantly, leading to the Bahrain Grand Prix being a horrible weekend and the first real wake-up call of 2019 that things were not so good. But then came the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix, a weekend where Renault were very, very fast and living up to the potential they had coming into 2019. And as I'll get on to later on, I actually think this weekend for how poor they started the season was bad for them. Because the good weekend they had papered over the cracks at this point of the season when they didn't fundamentally have a good car. But anyhow, in Shanghai, they qualified on the fourth row of the grid and were very close to getting Daniel Ricciardo into P6 just ahead of Pierre Gasly. So the pace of the Renault was good, and in the race, the pace was still good for Renault. Maybe not as good, though, as it was in qualifying. Because for Daniel Ricciardo, once he maintained P7 at the start of the Grand Prix, for the rest of the race, he had Sergio Perez and Kimi Raikkonen all over the back of him and drove very nicely to just about hold off Perez and Raikkonen, who were driving very well in the racing point in Alfa Romeo, respectively. As Daniel got another important six points for the Renault Works team, but Nico Hülkenberg once again had reliability troubles. As around the first round of pit stops, Nico Hülkenberg's power unit was starting to play up, meaning he had to try and reset it behind the wheel. But that didn't work, meaning Renault had to retire his car. So even though Renault this weekend had easily the best midfield car, they were still blowing points when really it should have been a strong double points finish for the Renault Works team. And that theme will continue into the rest of this review of 2019 in terms of Renault looking promising with the pace of the car they had going into the race, but then not delivering the result the pace does deserve. In Baku though, Renault deserved absolutely nothing as they were horrifically poor in Baku. And this was down to simply a lack of grip and a lack of straight line speed compared to other engine suppliers. Even though the Renault power unit in 2019, as we'll get onto later on, has improved, it still wasn't doing quite enough to put Renault in a strong position as the best they could do in qualifying was P11 and P16 with Nico Hülkenberg down in 16th. And to go into more detail at the lack of grip in Baku for Renault, it was simply down to Renault locking up into every slow corner. And it even got so bad that Daniel Ricciardo was losing sets of tyres he was allowed to use because he had locked up so many sets in practice. And once we got into the race, things did not really get any better for the Renault Works team. Daniel Ricciardo was able to fight for maybe P10 and a single point, but completely blew it on Daniel Kvyat. As after trying to go for a move on Daniel Kvyat at the end of the second DRS straight, he went off the track with Kvyat and then when reversing, reversed straight into him. Ending Daniel and Daniel's race. The fastest way to parallel park, pull up alongside the car that you want to get behind, slam it in reverse, don't look in your mirrors, whiz it in, say, hey, how are you? I'm really good at parallel parking. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Nico Hülkenberg finished in P14, which would go on to be last of the midfield runners. The less said about Baku, the better. But Ricardo's reversing into Daniel Kivia actually cost him quite heavily for the next Grand Prix in Barcelona. Because Daniel Ricciardo in qualifying just about got into the top 10 and qualified in P10, but because he incurred a grid penalty for what he did to Kvyat in Baku, he had to start the race from 13th in a position that was not too good for Daniel if he was going to get a strong points finish. Meanwhile, Hülkenberg was busy putting his car in the barriers and not being quick either, ending up getting knocked out again in qualifying one for the third time in the first five races and the race didn't really get any better for Renault. Nico Hülkenberg for example didn't really improve that much on his qualifying performance ending up in 13th place and Daniel Ricciardo tried the best he could but simply didn't have the car or the team to get into the top 10 because in the first into the Grand Prix he was being held up behind Carlos Sainz trying to get his way past so he could try and get up to the top 10 and fight for points and eventually Daniel did get past Carlos Sainz. But then at the first round of pit stops Renault made an awful decision in putting Daniel Ricciardo on the white wall hard compound tyres which as we saw in the same race with Charles Leclerc was a poor decision. 
That allowed Carlos Sainz to get back past Daniel Ricciardo, and then Ricciardo dropped off to the point where he couldn't fight for points. And even when the safety car came out, he was too far back in the pack to get close enough to just about nick a point, meaning Renault was scoreless for the Spanish Grand Prix. And after the races in Baku and Spain, I think you can kind of see why I said that the Chinese Grand Prix and them being so quick was actually not a good thing for them. Because I think that race maybe convinced Renault that actually they did have a good car when they didn't. Because fundamentally, in the first five races of 2019, Renault were too slow and needed really the strong reality check they got for four of the five races to then go on to later in the season be a bit quicker. But after the Spanish Grand Prix, things were now turning more so in Renault's favour as the pace of the car was starting to improve quite a lot to the point where Renault could fight at the front of the midfield for the big points. And it was really Daniel Ricciardo's great qualifying performance that started off the good form by qualifying in P7, which later would go on to be P6 because of a grid penalty for Pierre Gasly. As Daniel Ricciardo drove out of his skin to put that car in the great position it was going to be in for the race. And then at the start, he got past Kevin Magnussen and up to P5. And at this point of the Grand Prix, Renault were in a very good position with Daniel Ricciardo because he was ahead of the entire midfield. And even though the pace of the Renault was not amazing, as long as in Monaco you have track position, it doesn't really matter the pace of your car. But saying that, Renault made at the first round of pit stops once the safety car came out a horrible decision. As after Charles Leclerc made contact with the barriers when trying to pass, funnily enough, Nico Hülkenberg, he got a puncture and left debris all over the track. And then when the safety car came out, Renault very stupidly decided to pit Daniel Ricciardo. Now I understand why they did this, but that does not mean it was the right decision and it never was. In Monaco, you never put your cars back in traffic. Because as I said a moment ago, it doesn't matter if your car is not that quick. If you have track position and you have free air in front of you, that is better. Because even if, say, you have a very quick car in traffic, you can't use it in Monaco. And it's not just because of the way the 2019 cars are in terms of width and the aerodynamics on the front wing. You've never been able to use pace in traffic at Monaco. Look at Mansell in 1992 behind Ayrton Senna. Or David Coulthard in 2001, where he was actually starting from pole, stalled his car, started at the back, and ended up getting lapped, even though, of course, he wasn't that slow. Around Monaco, it is all about track position, and you should never give it up. And for Renault to give up track position and expect Daniel Ricciardo to somehow finish at the front of the midfield still was incredibly ambitious, to say the least. And it is no surprise he only finished in P9, not in P5, where he should have. This strategy decision is honestly Ferrari levels of dumb. And for Nico Hülkenberg, the best way to describe his Monaco Grand Prix is meh. He qualified 11th and he finished in 13th. Nothing else really happened, except for the stuff with Charles Leclerc. But Renault were about to get a massive boost, not only for their confidence, but also for their constructors' position in Canada. As in the qualifying session in Montreal, they had their best qualifying result of the V6 hybrid era, with Daniel Ricciardo in fourth place with Nico Hülkenberg down in P7. Renault were now clearly at the front of the midfield this weekend and were looking very strong. And it was down to a couple of things. One, the Renault car in 2019 was very good at low drag circuits. As you'll see later on once we get to Spa and the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. But also another thing that did contribute, we have to admit, to Renault's good performance, especially of Daniel Ricciardo, were poor performances from certain drivers. Drivers such as Pierre Gasly and Valtteri Bottas. Because simply they should not have been fighting the Renault of Daniel Ricciardo or Nico Hülkenberg for that matter. But still, Renault had to put the laps in to be right in there and they deserved to be in there for the improvements they clearly made to the car. And when we got into the Grand Prix, the great thing we got to see was that Renault were actually quick as well in the race, not just in qualifying. 
As Daniel Ricciardo was able to keep pace with the Red Bull Pierre Gasly, even Max Verstappen who was starting from P11 and Valtteri Bottas in clearly the best car. And at one point around midway through the Grand Prix, Nico Hülkenberg was ahead of Valtteri Bottas and was not under threat and was in fact in a couple of occasions pulling away. It was a truly unbelievable sight considering how Renault started 2019. But eventually, of course, Valtteri Bottas and Max Verstappen got past the two Renaults because at the end of the day, they were just about quick enough to beat them. Leading the two Renaults to finish in 6th and 7th place with Ricardo and Hülkenberg separated very closely at the finishing line. But this was the weekend that I think allowed Renault to gain confidence. And from this point on in the season, even though the rest of the season still wasn't quite good enough, as we'll get into in a moment, Renault were not as poor pace-wise on a consistent basis as they were before Canada after this Canadian Grand Prix performance. So this was clearly a step up for Renault. And after that great result in Canada, it was next their home Grand Prix in France in Paul Ricard. A race, of course, back in the 1980s, they won on a couple of occasions. But compared to the Canadian Grand Prix, they simply, as expected, were not as quick. Firstly, in qualifying, Daniel Ricciardo qualified in P8, and that was the best he could do because simply, a new team had now took charge at the front of the midfield and would never really let it go until the end of 2019. And that team, of course, was McLaren. And this was really the first race of 2019 when McLaren clearly showed they were better than Renault. And this is also where they really started to assert their dominance over Renault, especially in that Constructors fight. Nico Hülkenberg, though, was only down in 13th place because of a big lockup and mistake in qualifying two that cost him a certain top 10 finish. And the race for Renault was good in terms of speed, but the end result was not quite what they were hoping for. Daniel Ricciardo in the race was consistently fighting right at the front of the midfield and getting right in there with McLarens at one point. That point being, of course, the very end with Lando Norris. But because he overtook Norris illegally around the outside of the chicane on the Mistral Straight and then overtook Kimi Raikkonen illegally, he incurred a penalty and dropped out of the points, allowing Nico Hülkenberg, who made good progress in the race, to finish in 8th. And that was only the real dampener on Renault's race because their pace was strong and they really could have got a great result compared to McLaren if they didn't incur the penalties of Daniel Ricciardo. The next race though in Austria is still to me and I think to Renault as well a mystery. Because as we know the Austrian Grand Prix track the Red Bull Ring is a power track. It's very similar to Canada and tracks like Spa and Monza as well. It's very high speed and it definitely suits cars with good straight line speed. And the Renault at power tracks in 2019 we know has been very good. But for some reason in Austria they were very slow. As the best they could do in qualifying was 12th and 14th and 12th and 13th in the race. And again I still think this weekend in Austria is still a mystery even to Renault because... It's quite strange how slow they were again considering the characteristics of the track. And it's not like the two drivers are horrible at the Red Bull Ring, so it was a very weird weekend in Austria. Where simply they just lacked pace, that's all we can really say for that weekend. That of course though wouldn't happen at the next race in England where of course the Renault team base is in Enstone. As they bounced back with a very strong qualifying performance in P7 and P10 for Ricardo and Hülkenberg respectively. And they got the same result in the race. So of course you would expect that Renault had a very strong race and they outscored McLaren and started to catch them in the constructors. But that of course was not the case. As despite having very good pace compared to McLaren they lacked the result compared to McLaren. As even though Ricardo was P7, Carlos Sainz was just ahead in 6th place as he benefited Carlos Sainz a lot from the safety car coming out when it did. And it's a shame for Ricardo especially because his pace was very strong at Silverstone and he was probably the best driver from the midfield pack and he really did deserve to finish at the head of the pack. But of course he did not and for Nico Hülkenberg it was quite a scruffy Grand Prix. Again, he had the pace like his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, but just didn't get the result. And of course, having reliability issues late on and getting hit by Sergio Perez at the safety car restart didn't help. So despite the good pace, again, lacking in the result for Renault. 
And you will see from now on in 2019 as well, that compared to McLaren, that happens quite a lot. As from this point on, there were plenty of races where Renault were just as quick, if not quicker than McLaren, but ended up getting less points. The following race though in Hockenheim would present a very good opportunity to home driver Nico Hülkenberg, of course. As of course at Hockenheim we had a wet race and wet races are always a classic and this one was as well. And it was certainly a helping hand that it was wet for the Grand Prix because Renault's dry pace in qualifying was not that great. With Hülkenberg P9 and Daniel Ricciardo in P13. But considering the talent of both drivers in the wet, the pace of the Renault car normally in the wet and the situation in hand, surely this was the day Renault would get that big surprise result. And when Nico Hülkenberg was up in P4, P5 and even in a podium position at one point, it looked as though it was really going to happen. But of course, in typical Nico Hülkenberg fashion, he threw it all away in the barriers. Going off at the final two corners and getting on top of the icing rink at those two corners was the worst thing he could have done. As as soon as he got onto that part of the track, as we know from that race, it was game over. Not for the first time and certainly for the last time, Nico Hülkenberg threw away a podium opportunity into the barriers. You blew it! But maybe Daniel Ricciardo, now Hülkenberg is out of the race, is taking what Hülkenberg had and making something of it. Maybe Ricardo will get the podium Hülkenberg should have. That would be the case if Ricardo didn't blow up many laps before Hülkenberg retired, as he kicked up the kind of spray that is not exactly the correct one in wet conditions. The coming away from this race, a race which presented a massive opportunity, Renault had a double DNF. And from this point on, it looked pretty certain Renault were not going to have, in the constructors at least, a successful season. And it was a horrible way for this team to go into the summer break. But there was one final race before the summer break that hopefully for Renault would give them a bit of confidence. It did the exact opposite. As they qualified 11th and 18th as Daniel Ricciardo was blocked horribly by Sergio Perez in qualifying. I'm not necessarily saying Perez was at fault but definitely this could have been handled better. And with Daniel Ricciardo starting so far down, there was nothing Daniel was ever going to be able to do to finish in the top 10. Meaning Renault's hopes for the race lied upon Nico Hülkenberg to go and get that big result going into the summer break. And normally when you start P11 on the tyres you want to start on, that can allow you to have that strong Grand Prix. But Renault simply didn't have that. Nico Hülkenberg lacked fundamental pace just like the Renault car did. Meaning Renault ended up with no points from the final two races before the summer break. And it was the worst possible way to go into the summer break knowing they had had two races on the bounce where they could have had a lot more. And as you can see here we're starting to put them in a precarious position compared to teams like Alfa Romeo and Toro Rosso in the constructors. And if this was to somehow get better in the second half of 2019 they needed big results right away once we came back from the summer break and once we came back of course from the summer break the first two races and the last two races actually of the european season were of course the belgian and italian grand prix two races where renault had to strike back and they mostly did and we'll start off of course with the first of those two races at spa well, the qualifying pace of Renault was actually quite good. They qualified in 6th and 7th, but because they exceeded the amount of parts they could use on the power unit, they had to start from P11 and P12. But at least the pace was there. But it wasn't so much there necessarily in the race, and their race was quite dramatic. First off at the start, Daniel Ricciardo was up in the air at one point and had damage to his car and pitted at the end of lap 1 and was put on an awful strategy. The strategy I like to call the hit and hope, where you pit your driver onto a set of tyres very early on because of damage and just run him into the race as long as possible with no clear idea as to what you are actually doing and just hoping that somehow, some way, he finishes in the position you want him to finish in. And that's exactly what Renault did with Daniel Ricciardo. And by no surprise, it didn't work at all. He finished down in P14. And this strategy for Daniel Ricciardo at Spa is definitely one of the worst of 2019 by a mile. 
Nico Hulkenberg, though, would get a points finish and finish in P8 for Renault. But it was not overall a good result because Toro Rosso actually outscored Renault in the Belgian Grand Prix. Despite the two Toro Rosso starting much further back on the grid for the race. So despite the good pace and despite Nico Hulkenberg getting a points finish, it was still not a good race. Or a good weekend for that matter. With of course Renault Academy driver Antoine Hubert also sadly passing away during the weekend which I'm sure affected the entire morale of Renault for the race. But their morale would get a massive boost at the Italian Grand Prix one week later, as Renault not only had the best midfield car that weekend, they weren't that far off the top two teams Ferrari and Mercedes. As first in qualifying, it was P5 and P6 for Ricardo and Hülkenberg, and Ricardo was only half a second off of pole position. Which, if you compare to his Red Bull days, is probably the closest he's ever been to pole position at that track. It was slightly marred, though, by the events of what happened at the very end of qualifying, which Nico Hülkenberg absolutely should have got a penalty for. But as we know, in 2019, the FIA had been incredibly weak, so of course he did not get one. But in the race, Renault had by an absolute mile their best race as a works team since they came back into Formula 1 three years earlier. Finishing 4th and 5th and being very, very quick. And this was one of the first times since they came back into the sport as a works team where Renault actually looked like a proper team. And the 22 points they got for that result was exactly what they deserved. Of course, it was helped by Sebastian Vettel spinning, but still, their pace was strong. And the reason they were so quick at Monza was simply because, as I said earlier, as I'm now going to prove, the Renault car and the Renault power unit is a lot stronger at the more power-reliant circuits on the calendar. And you can see here in the qualifying speed traps, the Renault is in the top 10, which is something that was not quite the case in years past. And it signifies a step up on the power unit side for Renault, but sadly in 2019, they took a step back on the downforce side. But the next race in Singapore would represent a big test for Renault to see if the downforce on their car was still good enough to race teams like McLaren. And it still was. As they qualified in 8th place with Nico Hülkenberg, Daniel Ricciardo did qualify in the top 10, but he exceeded the MG UK power limit, so started from the back. And in the race, the pace was good and it was promising for Renault. But as usual, they completely cocked it up in what was an immensely scruffy Grand Prix with contact with drivers such as Hülkenberg and Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo on Antonio Giovinazzi. But I really think this Singapore Grand Prix race perfectly sums up Renault in 2019. They had the pace, there was promise there, but most of the time failed to deliver. And the reason they failed to deliver is either poor strategy or their drivers running into other people or getting caught up in other people's accidents. But again, this race really was a good description of how Renault have been this season. And the next race in Russia was basically the same thing. In qualifying, again, good pace, good starting position, P7 and P10 for Hülkenberg and Ricciardo respectively. But then once we got to the race, the pace again was not quite good enough compared to McLaren and the result was quite poor. As Hülkenberg had a very underwhelming race in the Renault, only finishing in P10. And Daniel Ricciardo was took out on the first lap and later retired because of the damage he picked up. Again, great promise, no results. And I think definitely the peak of Renault's troubles in 2019 happened during the Suzuka weekend in Japan. Qualifying, of course, did not go their way, only qualifying 15th and 16th with Hülkenberg and Ricciardo. Ricciardo simply didn't have the pace in the Renault. And Hülkenberg had a hydraulic problem, that's why he qualified only in 15th. But in the race, they were very, very quick and got a great result at the time. But then, as we know, they were both disqualified because of an illegal braking system on their car, which, according to the FIA, operated as a driver aid. Now, I'm not going to get into detail about this now because I've already done a video about this about a month ago. So if you do want to see that, the link is down below in the description. Make sure to go and watch it. But this really did just cap off the horrible 2019 it's been. 
And because now P4 in the Constructors' Championship was lost, it was now all about holding off Toro Rosso for P5 in the Constructors, and that was proving quite hard to do. And things were not looking good at Renault after qualifying in Mexico, qualifying only 12th and 13th, as again, they lacked fundamental pace. The race, though, saw a great performance by Daniel Ricciardo that I think absolutely lifted the team after the difficult past fortnight after Suzuka. With Daniel Ricciardo, of course, starting the Mexican Grand Prix on the hard compound tyres and running very long into the Grand Prix and putting in very competitive lap times. Lap times that would see him jump other drivers and get right into the points once he finally pitted. And tried his best, of course, to pass Sergio Perez for P7, but couldn't do so. But his performance in Mexico was definitely one of the best of the season. And I think it does show from a Daniel Ricciardo side that Daniel in 2019 has done well and has the pace still, but the Renault car is just hard to drive. Meanwhile, for Nico Hülkenberg, during the Mexican Grand Prix, he hovered around the top 10 and was right in the top 10 at the very end of the race when Daniel Kvyat torpedoed into him, meaning Hülkenberg was out of the points after that, but then Kvyat got a penalty putting Hülkenberg back in. And the race a week later at the Circuit of Americas essentially finished off Toro Rosso's challenge for P5 in the Constructors. With Renault 9th and 11th in qualifying and in the race they had a very strong race pace-wise and the result was also good as it was P6 and P9. With Daniel Ricciardo again putting in an immense performance outperforming his car and doing very well to beat the two McLarens despite McLaren being quicker and Lando Norris being very quick at the end of the race on much fresher tyres. And Hülkenberg benefited very nicely from a similar strategy to Lando Norris pitting four soft, fresh tyres at the end and being very, very quick. And that allowed him to just about finish in P9 and collect more vital points for Renault. And now that Renault had mostly staved off Toro Rosso's challenge for fifth in the Constructors, it was all about the final two races in Brazil and Abu Dhabi going out in style if they could. Brazil, though, was mostly the opposite of that. In qualifying, they were hopelessly slow compared to previous races. Only 12th and 14th it was for Renault. And in the race, it was 6th for Daniel Ricciardo, but it was 15th for Nico Hülkenberg. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, early on in the Grand Prix, took out Kevin Magnussen, had to pit for a new front wing, and also got a penalty. But because of the chaos at the end with the two safety cars, Daniel Ricciardo did benefit a lot from that. And that's why Daniel was able to get back into a good points position. Not because the Renault car was quick, but because of the chaos that was ensuing. And for Hülkenberg, it was quite a poor weekend. No pace compared to Daniel Ricciardo, and he got a penalty at the end of the Grand Prix for overtaking behind the safety car. But with Toro Rosso getting a very surprising podium finish with Pierre Gasly up in P2 and Daniel Kvyat finishing P10, the pressure was a bit more on now going into that final race in Abu Dhabi, but Renault fundamentally had the quicker car. And really they got the job done over Toro Rosso in qualifying by getting two cars into the top 10 in 8th and 10th. And even though they finished the race outside of the points in the P11 and P12, Daniel Kvyat could only get P9, meaning Renault held on for 5th in the Constructors. But that is something Renault should not have been doing at all in 2019. They should not have been competing tooth and nail with Toro Rosso for 5th in the Constructors. And if we look at here the Constructors table and the difference between Renault and McLaren, you can clearly see how poor Renault were. Was it an absolutely cataclysmic season? Of course it wasn't. But you cannot doubt after finishing P4 in 2018 and being so far ahead of McLaren also in 2018, 2019 was simply not good enough and took a noticeable step back. But now for the final part of this video, let's look at the key personnel at Renault and their contribution to the failure of 2019. And we'll start off with the drivers. First off, their star driver, Daniel Ricciardo. Now, Daniel Ricciardo in 2019 hasn't had a season that, in terms of the results and the Drivers' World Championship, has been as good as he was hoping for. But if you actually look at his performances in that car, considering the pace of the car at certain points of the season, at certain races, most of the time, Daniel Ricciardo has been pretty great. 
Yes, there has been races where Hulkenberg has been able to beat him and be faster than him, but most of the time, Ricardo left Hulkenberg in the dust. And to be honest, looking at Daniel Ricardo's 2019, I can't really fault Daniel for anything. Again, there has been the odd race where he hasn't been that quick, but that is to be expected from any driver. You're not going to be amazingly quick at every single race. The only thing that could improve really comes down more so to Renault than Daniel Ricciardo. And that one thing is Daniel Ricciardo is a confidence driver. When he is super confident, he is at his absolute best. And when you've got a confident Daniel Ricciardo, he can do pretty much anything. But because the Renault car in 2019 has been inconsistent and there has been points of the season where it's just not been good enough, it's not allowed Daniel Ricciardo to have that confidence he had at Red Bull. So giving Daniel in 2020 a car that is consistently good and is something that is good to work with will allow Daniel Ricciardo to elevate even higher. But for other driver Nico Hülkenberg, it was a season that was quite disappointing. Because coming into 2019, this was the season now that Daniel Ricciardo was his teammate, a proper top driver. This was the season where Nico Hülkenberg had to prove how good he really was now that he's basically Hülkenberg at the peak of his powers. And if he was ever going to progress from Renault and maybe go to a top team, he had to perform at his absolute best in 2019. But I'm afraid he didn't. As Daniel Ricciardo comfortably beat Nico Hülkenberg during the course of 2019. And to me, it's not really a shock or a surprise because I knew coming into 2019 that Hülkenberg realistically over the course of the season was not going to be as good as Daniel Ricciardo at all. And if you go back and look at the race by race analysis I've just done of the two drivers at every single Grand Prix in 2019, you can see there's plenty of races, especially in qualifying, where Hülkenberg doesn't get the best out of the car. Getting eliminated in qualifying 1 too often or getting eliminated in qualifying 2 when his teammates getting into qualifying 3, it happened way too often. And the only times really during 2019 where Hülkenberg was actually quick was coincidentally when the Renault car was super quick at that particular weekend such as Canada or Italy. And now of course he is out of Formula 1 as Esteban Ocon has replaced Hülkenberg at Renault for 2020. Now, does Nico Hülkenberg deserve to stay in Formula 1? Of course he does. And in fact, I still believe he deserves to stay at Renault. Because I don't necessarily believe that Ocon is a step up on Hülkenberg. But if you look at 2019, he had chances to really showcase why he should be in Formula 1 and at Renault for 2020. Look at a race, for example, at the German Grand Prix where he was in a podium position and he absolutely blew it. I guarantee you, if he finished on the podium at that Grand Prix, Nico Hülkenberg would be in Formula 1 next season and would probably be at Renault. Because I don't see how Renault would have the grounds to drop Hülkenberg after getting their first podium since they came back into the Sport of the Works team. But as usual with Nico Hülkenberg, when he gets that golden opportunity, he completely throws it away. And over the course of his career, when it comes to him staying in Formula 1, you can't say he hasn't had enough chances. He has had plenty of chances to get a podium and plenty of opportunities to show why he should be in a top or good team in Formula 1 and he hasn't quite showcased enough. And quite frankly, he's had enough time to showcase how good he could really be in Formula 1 and to showcase whether he could possibly be in a top team. And it is time for him to go. But to be honest, if you look at the drivers, you can't really blame them that much. I think the two drivers did mostly the best they could. The people that you've got to blame has to be first off, team boss Cyril Abitbull. A man who seemingly does nothing and has nothing to offer. And in 2019, Cyril definitely has to take probably the majority of the blame. For keeping certain people in the technical team who are clearly not good enough, which is why Renault didn't produce a good enough car. Also showing a lack of leadership during the season that led to, in my opinion, the inconsistency of Renault. But when it comes to Cyril Abitbull, can someone answer me in the comments section down below? What has Cyril done in Formula 1 since 2014? Of course, he was team boss at Caterham, then that fell apart. Then he headed up the Renault project in Formula 1 before the Renault Works team came back in in 2015, and Renault in 2015 were terrible. 
And then since Renault came back into Formula 1 as a works team in 2016, they have improved, but certainly not quick enough by this point in the project. And I just struggle to think when it comes to Cyril Abitbull, what has he actually accomplished in Formula 1 in the last five years? Maybe you could argue convincing Daniel Ricciardo to come to Renault was one, but I think more so the money played a factor. But honestly, I cannot think of anything this man has done which really deserves him being the team boss of Renault. And if Renault want to go anywhere in Formula 1 as a works team, then Cyril Abitbull cannot be their team boss. Again, he lacks leadership and he does not have, in my opinion, what it takes to lead a team forward into a promising position. And there are plenty other team bosses on the grid who I would rather have in his position. One person who I'd rather have in his position actually used to have his position. That person being, of course, Frederick Vassa, who, of course, now is the team boss of Alfa Romeo. I really don't understand why he isn't at Renault anymore. I know there were differences of opinion in the team with Vassa and Renault, but he is a much better team boss than Cyril Abitbull. And I guarantee you Renault would be making a lot more progress under Frederick than they would right now under Cyril. Just look at what Frederick has done to Sauber. He took them from the brink of falling out of Formula 1 financially, a team that was last in the Constructors' Championship, to a team that is now very competitive in the midfield pack around P6, P7 in the Constructors at best. And that's only in, what, two years? Since Cyril took over as team boss of Renault, he hasn't done that much improvement to Renault. And there is also one last thing I have to criticise when it comes to Cyril Abitbull for 2019, and it is this quote from the first race. And it's him complaining about the whole B-team Red Bull Toro Rosso scheme. Basically talking about how Formula 1 needs to monitor teams like Toro Rosso so they're not a B-team effectively to Red Bull in terms of the car they have. Renault should not be in a position where they're worrying or complaining about Toro Rosso. This is Renault, the Renault Works team. The same Renault Works team who 15 years ago were winning races and world championships. Meanwhile, Toro Rosso were Minardi. But instead of looking at the real problems within the team that has caused the mess of 2019 and that was causing the slow start to 2019 at the time, he instead blames Toro Rosso. If Renault want to go any higher in Formula 1, Cyril has to go. But the last group of people we must talk about is the technical team at Renault who have failed during the 2019 season to produce a car that aerodynamically was good enough to finish comfortably at the front of the midfield pack, which was the expectation of Renault for 2019. As they produced a car in 2019 that was aerodynamically inconsistent and was quite mediocre. And as it turned out, this season was actually more so important for Renault to get the aerodynamic side of their car right than in previous seasons. Because in 2019, Renault made quite a big step up on the power unit side compared to previous seasons. So if they could get the aerodynamic side more so right and keep improving that area, then overall they could have a pretty good car. But instead, the aerodynamic side fell down compared to, say, 2018. And this has led to the right decision of Nick Chester leaving Renault, a man who has produced many mediocre cars in the past few years. Nick Chester is not bad at designing cars. Again, he can design decent cars, but not great cars. And thankfully, the Renault bosses have seen this and are now starting to work on improvements in this specific area. Because if they can slowly but surely improve the power unit side and close the gap to Ferrari, for example then they can focus more of their resources on getting the aerodynamic grip right. And they really have to, because the amount of lap time they're losing in the corners is quite poor, considering the resources they have, and also the type of personnel they possess. In 2019, Renault were, at best, on a normal day, about 1.5 seconds off the front-running pace. Now, at most, you could probably say 7 tenths of a second is down to power but it is more so, I would say, half a second. So if you take away the differences in power, that means that the Renault car aerodynamically is still giving away about a second per lap to the front runners in the corners. And that is what Renault really do need to concentrate on because 
they can make massive improvements to their power unit and maybe one day have the best engine in Formula 1. But if the grip of their car is still that poor compared to the front runners, they're never going to be a front runner. But what is the future then for Renault going into 2020? Well, they should produce a better car and I think they will. I don't think they're that bad in terms of personnel that they're going to produce a car that is just as bad, if not worse, than the 2019 car. They will improve and they will produce a car that I think consistently is better than the 2019 car and is able to compete with McLaren on a more regular basis if McLaren keep their position at the front of the midfield. But most likely, if there is going to be any improvement, it's not going to be massive. It's going to be quite small and the steps are going to be quite small in 2020. And they really have to be because, of course, 2021 is right around the corner and Renault have got to get ready for that. But I will say I wouldn't be surprised if Renault in 2020 were just as poor as they've been in 2019. It can easily happen again because our expectations for this team, considering the personnel in place, is still quite high. Just like it is for a team like McLaren as well. But as long as Renault over this winter have focused on improving the aspects that were clearly failing them in 2019, then for 2021, they can put full focus on that and maybe, maybe Renault will join the front pack. And even though I've criticised this team a lot in the past year, I really do hope they can improve because we need another team fighting for victories and podiums. And at Renault, the potential is there, they've just got to fulfil it. But guys, let me know in the comments section down below for Renault in 2019, what are your overall thoughts of their 2019 and how do you think they could have, I guess, done things better? Let me know in the comments section down below and also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button as well for more content like this. And just to let you guys know, my final video of 2019 will be coming out lunchtime on New Year's Eve and it will be a highlights of 2019 video, me talking about basically my year and how it's gone and be showing you as well the highlights of my watch alongs that we've been doing in 2019 as well where you get to hear me and Nib screaming. So make sure to come along to that when it comes out on New Year's Eve. But guys, until then, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.